the first time I started to understand what menopause was and premenopause and perimenopause, all these things was from guests that have come here. Yeah. And it's such a big, it was such a big light bulb moment for me because I have um, yes. women in my life that are going through th uh, th that phase of life. And yeah. I feel like they are so misunderstood in so many ways. Thank you. And I love hearing about it now um, because it's gonna help me relate to those women in a better way and have and understand how I can be a partner with them through that mm -hmm. phase of life. Like, you know, certain members of my family yeah. that are going through that phase of life. What do, what do we need to know as men, but also as women about menopause, perimenopause and all those things? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking. I think that we're the most misunderstood um, age group of women and the 45 to 55 year old in that decade is the most common time for women to commit suicide. Really? Yeah. This is why my next book I'm writing right now is on the mental health of menopausal women because we're struggling. And so the first thing you have to know is that after 40, our sex hormones start to decline. So estrogen goes up and down. So one day you're gonna experience, if you, have a, if you live with a 43 year old woman, you're gonna experience she's great. Next day you're gonna be like, who are you? That's because her estrogen is on a roller coaster ride. So that's the first thing to know. Second thing is that progesterone is plummeting after 40. They actually say now at 35, progesterone is starting to go down. So as progesterone goes down, we are less stress resilient. So little things are gonna irritate us like they've never irritated us before. And you might be the recipient of that. So if you find we're very triggerable, it's because we're losing progesterone. So we need to, we just need to have more breaks. We need more nurturing, like I explained in the menstrual cycle. We need to have more love brought our way because we just can't handle stress the same way. And then as, as ultimately estrogen finally goes into a place where she's non-existent once a woman doesn't have her cycle, we can't hold on to information the, way, the same way we used to be able to. We forget things and it's really frustrating to us. And so when people around us, like I went through this with my team, when I was trying to get my menopausal hormones in check, they would say, well, you already told us that. Yes, you reminded us of that. And I started finding I was repeating myself. And then I realized, oh, I'm at a new level of low of estrogen. And then I worked, you know, getting, I'm working with some bioidenticals, working with some lifestyle to bring my estrogen up. But from 40 till about 55, that is about a 10 to 15 year period where the woman's brain has to recalibrate to these loss of hormones. And so our moods are all over the place during that time. So understanding where we're at, having more compassion for us, not taking us on, um, and just helping us understand ourselves, which is largely what I'm trying to do through my books, is will be so helpful. But we don't even understand our own selves. Menopausal moods are, are treacherous. It's an extreme sport. It literally is an extreme sport. It's brutal. What, what about after 45? She said 40 to 45. Yeah, so once we actually go a whole year without a period, we actually do better. So the brain is used to the less hormones. So when we get on the other side postmenopausal, we actually are great. Uh, we're we, women that once they go to that side of the hormonal process tend to actually be, you know, we have so much wisdom, I'd like to think. Um, we actually tend to be the opposite of everything I just said. We tend to be more stress. Uh, we can handle stress better. We tend to be more gregarious. Our libido goes back up. Our, as our brain starts to recalibrate, we become a better version of ourselves. And that's that first phase, that 40 to 45 phase, what's that phase called? Is that the- That's perimenopause. Perimenopause. Yeah. And then menopause is beyond 45. Yeah, well, the average age for menopause right now is about 52. Although a lot of women are going in around 45, sometimes earlier. Okay. But but I think that if there was one thing I want, want I, I could help the world understand is that we're trying to understand ourselves during that time. So be patient with us because we may not, we may react much different than you've ever seen us react before. So we have to get to know ourselves from a new lens. That's mm. the gift that menopause actually gives us. And if you allow us to do that, when we make it through to the postmenopausal years, you're gonna have a beautiful 
wise, wonderful woman on the other side of that. It's just that transition into perimenopause is really a, a treacherous one. It's so interesting. It's so, it, I find it staggering that no one told me this at any point in my life. Agreed. Um, because irrespective of whether you are a woman or not, and you're gonna go through that, you're going to, um, your relationships with women are gonna be integral to your life unavoidably. Your mother, your Agreed. grandmother, your partner. So having the insight gives me the empathy. I love it. You know, and that's what yeah. that's why I'm so fortunate from having this conversation. It was Gabby Logan who came on this podcast, Davina McCall, who wrote a book about menopause in the end, and knew that I've really helped to open my eyes about that. And um it's interesting. I just I don't know what it is. I think growing up, like men just don't want to talk about periods and menstrual cycles yeah. and all of these kinds of things. They're almost taboo. Yeah. In a weird way. But I call it in the new book I'm writing, I, I'm calling it the cultural hush. Yeah. I think sense. we have a cultural hush around the menstrual cycle, around menopause. I can't tell you the number of men since Fast Like a Girl that has come out that read that book and they go to the chapter on women and hormones and then they come and find me and say, I finally understand my wife. Yeah. I finally understand my daughter. Well, why aren't we talking about that? And then how many women we don't we don't talk about like the fact that I'm I'm suffering because I don't have as much estro estrogen. It, it would we don't have a culture or a society that allows us to talk like that. And that's what I think is, is shifting right now. So many menopause books are coming out. Big people, you know, Oprah's starting to do a whole thing on menopause. Like the conversation's opening up, but it's going to take bravery from women to step up. I mean, I'm a very, very capable woman who has a beautiful family and a great business. It's really hard for me to say, I can't do one more Zoom call. My brain can't do it. That feels like failure. And then we have the other side of this, which is we have the men that are like, why are you being a bitch today? It's like, because I don't have the hormone to stop me from being a bitch today. So those, those kind of conversations are not hand happening, but if we did it with more empathy, if we could express ourselves like, hey, I just need, I need a break right now is just a lot on my hormones. Give me 30 minutes, give me an hour, I can come back and be a better version. I just need to take care of myself now. Someone's gonna be listening to this and they're gonna think, Ugh, it's not a problem. You can just go get the hormones. You can just go get some HRT. It's called HRT, right? HRT, yeah. You can go get some HRT, throw that at the problem, then you'll have your hormones back. Yeah. So this is this is the big thing, is that just because you take a hormone doesn't mean your cells are gonna use it. So if you take it, let's use, let's use uh, thyroid. It's a perfect example because so many women specifically take thyroid medication and they don't see any, any, any change in their thyroid symptoms. It's called an exogenous hormone. You bring it into your body. The body registers that it's there. The gut and the liver have to still break that hormone down into a usable form. So if your gut is off or your liver is overloaded, you're not going to break that hormone down. Once that hormone's broken down, the cell has to be able to receive it. If that cell is a, a f inflamed with a lot of toxic oils and endocrine disruptors, there's no way to get the hormone into the cell. So there are three very pivotal pieces. You got to, there has to be production of the hormone, there has to be breaking down of the hormone, and there has to be receiving of the hormone. So when you take HRT, you're only handling one of those things. You still, and lifestyle, this is why I'm such a, so passionate about lifestyle. Lifestyle can handle the other two. They can take care of the gut and the liver. They can open up the cell so it can receive HRT. I, I've been, uh, I wrote a book called The Menopause Reset and it'll come out and we're reissuing it in uh, June. And one of the things in there is I, I mapped out five lifestyle changes that women should do after 40. And in that book, I lived that. I did that through my whole 40s. I didn't start doing bioidenticals till like 52. But I had my lifestyle dialed in first. And now bioidenticals are working well. People are sat there going, five lifestyle changes? They want to know what they are. They're going to they're gonna buy the book <laughs> as well, aren't we? We're going to buy the book and we're going to find out right now. Yes. Okay. Well, what do you think the first one is? Fasting. Yes, there you go. <laughs> the first one's fasting. Uh, so, and, and actually Fast Like a Girl came after the menopause reset because all the women asked me, well, what if I have a site, you know, what if I'm in my 30s? What if I'm in my 20s? How should I fast? So that's, you know, that was sort of the birth of that book. So fasting. 
Second one is you have to learn to cycle your food. So your ketogenic diet works really well at certain times. Cycle your food. Cycle your food styles. What does that mean? So if in the front half, if you have a menstrual cycle, yeah. in the front half when estrogen's coming in, go keto. Keep carbs low, keep glucose low, you're great. Back half of your cycle, when progesterone's coming in, raise glucose. So don't go keto. But do nature's carbs. Do more fruits. Do more squashes, potatoes. That's going to help with building progesterone. So the perimenopausal woman has to learn that there's times to bring carbs down and there's times to bring carbs up. And that's what I explain in that. I called it keto variations in that book. So that's step two. Step three, microbiome. You got to pay attention to your microbiome. Too many women have been on birth control for decades. They go screaming into their perimenopausal years and their microbiomes and is completely off. We have a whole set of bacteria in our gut called the estrobilome, which is the bacteria that break estrogen down. So you need to be eating more leafy green vegetables, more nuts and seeds, olives, chocolate even is great for the microbiome. So I list all those foods out in there. And then number four. And that's for stage two of the three steps to act these hormone replacement therapies actually working, which yes. is being able to metabolize the hormone, break it down. Yes, you so, got it. Okay. Yeah. Four, step four. You got it. You're going to be a hormone expert after this. Well, you I know, <laughs> not just a pretty face. Yeah. So then the fourth one is to watch your toxic load. Okay. So we talked about that. And then step five is my favorite. Um, and it's stop being a rushing woman. Yeah, I know. As I tell you from a rushing lifestyle. We need more, as we go through perimenopause, we need more more downtime. You got to schedule more downtime. You need to let that nervous system come down. You can't go through your perimenopausal years and thrive if you are go, go, go all the time. It will catch up with you. And so you've got to bring in more mindfulness, more meditation, more yoga, more, more vacations, more no's. That's got to be a part of your repertoire. You might have gotten away with it at 35, but you won't get away with it at 45. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor. Become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously. And the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.